um, I basically made a uh, like a like a concept T-shirt and sweater, um, posted it on to the story on Instagram, and somehow everyone wanted one. Um, all the followers were like just DMing me, so I ended up doing DM sales, um, put it in on Google Docs. Like we started selling this product out of the trunk of our car. Don't be afraid to fail. Inventory management is about balance. Get the product out, that's number one. I've always preached sustainable growth. So we just started building community. Look at the data. Product development is everything. Yeah, we say we're a brick, click, and pop. But you have to love what you do. Hey everyone, uh, welcome, welcome back. I hope everyone's been having a really awesome 2021 so far. We have not seen your awesome faces ever, but we, we particularly haven't spoken with any of you since December. So a lot has been happening in 2021, as I'm sure everybody knows. It's been an interesting year for sure. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of weird changes with like the Facebook algorithm. Uh, we, you know, there's the whole Mac update that's been happening. So a lot of different things happening. Uh, we often in the e-commerce space, you know, we're working with a lot of e-commerce businesses all around the world. Uh, we're having a really good pulse on what's happening there. We always call January like the BFCM hangover month, where it's like you had this massive momentum going into December. You made a ton of sales, hopefully, uh, over Black Friday and Cyber Monday, had your biggest month ever. And then January, everybody has like a shock to the system where it's like, oh, what happened to that um, amazing amount of momentum that I was happy, having? So like what, what's happened in January? And a lot of people are kind of scratching their heads. Like, what do I do now? Is my business ever going to get back to where it was in December? What do I do? So a lot of us in, in the space actually take a lot of like, first of all, we always want to be selling. So we're going to keep selling in January. We're not going to just put our foot on the brake in any way. But in January, a lot of the time, what we want to do is start planning out the full year so that we can plan more campaigns like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We can, you know, start planning out our Valentine's Day campaigns, planning out our spring campaigns. And we always want to be building momentum around campaigns, not just Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So I hope everybody's really happy to hear that. And I hope that you are doing that as well. Um, over at Merchant Mastery, we're really excited because we are launching a eight week training and coaching program on Monday. We're really, really excited about that. And as a part of that program, we have a whole planning calendar of how to plan these campaigns. Um, I encourage anybody to check that out. Of course, we will always be doing this podcast every month. So you can always come here and we're going to give you the best tips that we can. And if you have any questions today, if you're joining either through the Zoom webinar or you're in the Facebook group where it is streaming live right now, I believe it is. Yes, it is. Uh, ask questions. You can ask it in the Facebook group. You can ask it here. We're going to stick around and hang out and answer any kind of urgent e-commerce strategy questions you may have. Enough about January and the spiel. Let's get to the podcast. We're very, very excited today. So obviously everybody knows Ivana. Ivana is my colleague and she is the program director over at Merchant Mastery. But we are welcoming a really, really awesome guest today. His name is Michael Ng and he is the founder of Antisocial Running Club. And this is a really, really interesting story here. Why we thought it would be a great idea to bring Michael in because Michael is a startup founder. So like Antisocial Running Club is maybe six months old. I'll let Michael tell you all those details, but it's a new company. And he's built a lot of great momentum. It's been really exciting watching Michael build his company and coming up with new product lines and doing all these exciting things without advertising. Okay, so this is a pretty exciting thing that we wanted to hear personally. Like I, uh, selfishly, I want to hear, Michael, what are you doing? How are you building this business without advertising? So we'll jump right into that. Uh, everybody, without further ado, please welcome Michael Ng. Hello, hello. Um, thanks for having me. Um, really excited when you guys reached out. Um, love to talk about my my story absolutely so if anybody's been hanging out with us for a little while we had uh, we, we actually did a feature about anti-social running club during one of our shopify meetups in march i believe it was uh and that was right when the company started and the reason we featured anti-social running club in the shopify meetup is because he was using this really easy new template that shopify put out during the pandemic it was like you could set up your website in a day it was called like the express theme so you might've seen us go through his website back then. If you didn't, you can go back on the Merchant Mastery podcast. We have that episode there. But if you're, if you're brand new to Antisocial Running Club, let's hear it, Michael. What is Antisocial Running Club? Uh, Antisocial Running Club is a community that um, practices social distancing, um, but while maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Um, 
the idea came about when when COVID hit and you know gyms, studios, swimming pools are closed. Um, me and my group of friends had no idea like what to do. Um, so kind of decided to start a running club just between me and a group of say 10 friends. Um, obviously everything that I do, um, I, I like to have a little fun with it. So um, that's where ASRC came came to mind. And um, and it all started with with just a few friends on, on Strava. Well, so it's just like a little, yeah. little com community that it started out as. And I know you personally, you have a background in retail. Like you've kind of always worked in the consumer goods space, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I've been in retail for, I'd say almost legit my, my entire life. Um, my, my last job, I was a marketing manager over at, um, at Holt Renfrew for a few years in Edmonton. Um, the, the cool thing with that was, was seeing um, the level of, of retail that they did there. Uh, um, and it kind of brought, brought a little um, motivation for me once uh, that store closed to, to start something for myself. Yeah. Awesome. I know you've always been big on brand too. Like uh, for anyone who doesn't know, me and Michael are actually really good friends. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is a really, really, really good conversation yeah. to have. And I was like, Michael, you got to get out here for sure. Um, but I know that you've always been big on brand and you've kind of like, you had a photography company and you built a big following uh, on like right. event photography and those kinds of things. So I could see that in every aspect of Antisocial Running Club. Maybe we can get a link at some point of on Maybe we got a link to the story. We'll share it in the chat here. But uh, how how big is that? Like I, like I said, kind of alluded to, no advertising yet. So you're just kind of building it, this. It started off with a community and then it started off with a brand. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. Um, and, and the community building part that started um, from day one of of after after school kind of thing. Um, I started this this event photography company called In Your Face, um, and that's kind of how it started with with meeting a lot of people uh, in different industries in in Edmonton, um, whether they're restaurant owners, club owners, um, store owners. You meet them all. Um, they, they've become really good friends of mine. Uh, for example, uh, Blair from Red Star, uh, this great little pub uh, restaurant in Edmonton, uh, became great friends with him. Uh, we're working closely together on on our current event, uh, Dine and Dash. Uh, but people like like Austin from Maple, um, they they're they're big and they're they inspire me every day, kind of thing. Um, to to kind of build the community, to build the culture surrounding um, um, local business and and all that, all that good stuff. It doesn't really have to, I mean, it doesn't matter which industry you're in. If, if you're building that community within different communities, um, I think that's how, that's how Anti-Social Running Club came about because we're, we're running together, but, but not. I, uh, um, spoiler alert, I'm going to let everybody know the way that you, that Michael, if you didn't catch on, the way that Michael has built sales and a lot of momentum without advertising is through community. So we're going to get really deep into that. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. But that's honestly, um, when we work with a lot of Shopify stores, a lot of people have a trouble getting to that first thousand dollar a month mark. And we usually think about this, like the, the magic number where you need to validate product market fit. Do you have a product that the market actually wants? and they're buying it up without question. So it's really, really hard to kind of validate that momentum, uh, get to that first $1,000 a month. And you don't really wanna advertise a ton at that stage because you don't know if you have a product that the market will receive well. So you could be spending a ton on ads and thinking you have an ad problem, but really you might actually have a product and offer problem. So it's a really good idea to build up that initial base organically. And you usually do that with things like friends and family, community groups, and those kinds of things. So I recognize that Michael did that really well. And that's why we thought it'd be really great for you to share a little bit more about that story. Um, so you, you started this running club on Strava, 10 of you on there. All of a sudden now you're selling products and you have a huge Shopify store. So yeah. what, how did it transition? <laughs> um, it it, it, it kind of went crazy over the, the, the first week that we, we opened uh, the Strava club. Um, we have runners randomly from Dubai, Australia, China, across Canada, US, obviously, um, just randomly joining this this club that we created. Um, 
like we're sitting at close to uh, I'd say 700 runners world worldwide. Um, now that didn't really translate into um, like Instagram followers and sales necessarily, but it was building that club that um, kind of legitima legitimized the, I guess the the brand itself. So, um, Michael, for those who don't know yeah. and who have never heard of Strava before. Can you tell us what it is and then how do you actually like start building? How did you get those 700 people within that Strava app? Um, so within Strava, um, Strava, Strava is a, I, I guess a like GPS based um, mobile app for um, running, cycling. Um, I know they've added um, other sports in there recently, such as um, swimming, skating, skiing, all, all that good stuff. Um, so Think of it as as like a a Facebook group, but for um, for athletes or people who who like running um, is is the idea. So you create a a group within Strava, and and people join the 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 Strava club slash team. And is there a way like to promote your group on Strava? How do people find you on there? And through uh, through Instagram, it, it kind of worked hand in hand. Um, people found uh, ASRC on Instagram and would follow Strava. People would follow Strava and then find us on Instagram. Um, it kind of just snowballed um, that way organically. Um, I, I don't know what the algorithm is with all these people that have joined Strava, um, but it's, it's mostly, I'd say, all of it is word, word of mouth. Yeah, I mean, I've heard of the app. I haven't used it myself, but Scott, I think you're an avid Strava user. I hate to say it, I'm on I'm on the Nike Running Club app, <laughs> and I and I actually saw. Ooh. I just outed you. Oh. <laughs> I actually saw all my all my friends, like everybody I was competing with every month, leave, and I'm like, where did everybody go? And I found out they all went to Strava. So, uh, I'm too scared yeah. to give up all my data that I've been building up there for five or six years. You know what I mean? But um, so I, this is a good takeaway right now. This is a really good takeaway. We can always go and advertise and go and find new customers. That is actually quite easy to do. It's quite easy to go and spend a bunch of money and get a bunch of website visitors to your, to your landing pages. But what we're really trying to do before we decide, like I said, to go big on ad spend when we're just starting up to build that base, we want to go to where our customers hanging out and we want to present them with offers. So going and building a community on Strava or a Facebook group or all these different places are really good ways to build that community and have the opportunity to present your product and say, hey, community that I've built over the last four months, would you be interested in this type of product? And I've actually seen Michael do a lot of that. Like when you're coming up with product ideas, you're kind of like testing the market to see which ones they were leaning towards. Is that true? Yep. Um, when I first started ASRC, um, I, I didn't have a store. Before I before I came to to you and Dan through social, I, I had I didn't have a, an online shop. Um, I was selling directly through Instagram DMs. <laughs> so um, I basically made a uh, like a like a concept T shirt and sweater, um, posted it on to the story on Instagram, and somehow everyone wanted one. Um, all the followers were like just DMing me. So I ended up doing DM sales, um, putting it on Google Docs, uh, tracking sales that way. Um, and that's, and then thought, you know, that's not going to work for me. So I needed an online shop eventually, which is why uh, Shopify helped me out with that. When ASRC becomes an empire and it's already on that path, you got to remember <laughs> the first sales were DMing <laughs> Yeah, the, D, the the DMs were were a bit much, um, but but they were fun. They were fun. <laughs> All right. So you said the first concept was it? A, you said T-shirt and was it a sweatshirt? Uh, yeah, T-shirt and sweater. Just wanted to keep it simple. Um, I like I said, I I didn't really want it the the brand to be product driven. For me, it, community came first. Once you have community built and the culture built around that. Um, then, then the product will come, the product sales will come. So um, I wanted to, to make something where people could rep and, and that, that was just kind of the idea. Um, and now we've expanded into different products. Um, so from t-shirts and sweaters, uh, water bottles, tote bags, 
hats. Um, yeah. And, and more to come. So it, it's interesting because I'm seeing like more and more of your merch, just like on the streets of Edmonton. And I think initially yeah. I was thinking, I'm like, what is this club? And like, what are these, like, are, what are these cool people that are in it? Like, I want to be in this club, but I think even like with, um, you know, with other kind of like fitness companies, like, uh, like soul cycle and like jazzercise and all these like big totally. kind of fitness empires, they have a huge merch component because that really does like the marketing for them. And I, and that was always a big part of their marketing strategy. So it's interesting to see that it, it really does work. It does the marketing for you. Exactly. Yeah. It's- yeah, I just I had the exact same thought. I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing the merch everywhere. But but, but go ahead, Michael. Um, no, I was saying uh, so with Soul Cycle, it's 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 like more or less of a cult, right? You kind of want to have like a, a bit of a cult following. It's 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 like a it's like a you're you're basically a team, and that's kind of what worked for me is is building that team culture mentality. Is that we're we're a club um, and. And that's, that comes first. Anybody else just get goosebumps? I know I did. <laughs> I, I, I get them fairly easily. But, I definitely just, <laughs> but uh, no, I just the other day, like I was just saying, I was walking outside. We, we, we work in an office in downtown Edmonton. It's a pretty busy area, but I was just in this, the 7-Eleven getting um, a monster coffee drink. Don't tell anyone. But <laughs> I was just getting this monster coffee drink. And I saw someone wearing a shirt. And I was like, that's my friend Michael makes those shirts. And I was pretty proud. But so from then to, I'm just going to kind of give a little sneak peek here. Things have been snowballing like crazy over the last two months. And we're going to get over, we're going to get into that in a sec. But before we talk about how it's spiraling out of control and you're doing all these events and Canada wide and all this st- kind of stuff that's happening right now. Uh, tell me a little bit about like the product. What was next? So you kind of sold out of the, these first shirts through the DMs. You kind of built the Shopify store. We kind of talked about that already. What did you do next? Were you like, uh, I'm going to get more of the same product. Am I going to come up with a new product line? What, what was the thought process? Um, I, for me, I, like I said, I've been in, in, in retail my entire life. So I, I like to push new designs, new concepts, uh, because that's, that's the way fashion is, is done. It's, you know, you get, you get two seasons, um, spring, summer, fall, winter, and it's new things all the time. Um, I wanted to, to create new and different product, but also um, have my core product available. Um, I, I've, I've since gone away with that. My core product line looks a little bit more, I guess, refined. Um, but, um, you know, I went, obviously wanted to introduce water bottles, um, wanted to introduce toques. We live in Edmonton, it's cold. Um, just these little things just been adding to, uh, I guess, the, the overall product list. For global listeners, I, 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 this keeps coming up. I talk to a lot of people all over the world. Oh yeah, a toque, a toque. What is a toque? It's a Canadian it's a, word. Sorry, sorry, a beanie, a beanie, beanie for for the uh, non-Canadians. But we call it a toque here. <laughs> We're proud of it. It's a, it's a warm hat. But, yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I've like so I, I remember like some of the product development ideas. Like you're kind of you're exploring colors and sizes. I, I I've always thought that this was a phenomenal way to launch a product. We, we call this like an insider strategy where you go to your community and you say, hey, I'm thinking about developing it in black or white. Which one do you like better? Oh, they, you like everyone liked the white one. I'm thinking about doing this font or this one. Which one do you like? And there's so much buy-in along the way that by the time you come up with the final product, you say, hey, everybody, we went with this direction. Thank you so much for input on guiding this product. You can pre-purchase it right here. So you can kind of like pre-sell out products before you have to manufacture. Uh, were you getting a lot of good feedback from your community when you came up with product ideas? Yeah, and um, the the great way I did that was was going through the Instagram polls. Um, Scott, I was sending you that one with the water bottle. It was a, it was a black or white water bottle. I just couldn't decide. Like, what am I going to spend? Uh, what am I going to buy? Like, sixty black water bottles or sixty white water bottles? I had no idea what to do. Uh, um, I ended up buying both. <laughs> but uh, but it's you got to put that out there. Um, see what what they like. Um, get some honest feedback from, from your community. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be within the industry, just your friends, um, in different, in different industries. Uh, for, for my, uh, products, I, I've done a lot of pre-sale. So I, I get all the numbers in before I get it, um, screen printed, manufactured, um, 
So I, I've done the pre-sale business model um, for, for most of the product. And this is still all like organic, like you're still getting all this pre-sale data organically? Yeah, um, through Instagram stories and, and posts. Um, uh, I was looking at my Shopify uh, numbers and they're saying that around 98% comes from Instagram um, to the store. And yeah, I, I've maybe done a couple boosts for uh, Black Friday, um, uh, Boxing Day, uh, but that's, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. I think that's just like, you're living the dream right now. Everyone wants to sell, pre-sell products through community. I think it's so fabulous that you've done it. And without turning on any ads yet, has there been any ads yet? Um, Dan's been, been hounding me about uh, getting ads done. <laughs> um, but no, I haven't. <laughs> you do any email? Like you send any emails? Any email marketing at all? I have, I have sent zero emails. My but God. okay, that's, Living I know it's, it's, sure. it's, it's, it's coming. The emails are coming. <laughs> if, if honest, uh, the email person around here, so I, I know she's, uh, sees I, probably I a lot of heartbreaking. About <laughs> I saw, I, I was feeling a break. I was feeling the, the sadness, but I, I know that uh, you probably also recognize Ivana that there's a lot more opportunity ahead. If you're, if you're building that traction organically through community, lots of opportunity with emails and ads. Um, fantastic. So how many SKUs do you have now? Um, Ooh, how many excuse do I have? Um, not that many, I'd say, um, I'd say around 10 to 15. Okay. Small, small product line. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll bring in limited releases. Um, for example, I did a collab sock with, uh, Maple. They're originally based out of Edmonton. Uh, now they're in, from Vancouver. Um, I just had a very limited 50 pairs of socks, um, and then, uh, sold them for, so for Christmas and that was, that was it. You sold so out I, I, yeah, they're, they're gone. Um, <laughs> they, <laughs> so the, the idea was just to bring in, um, a quick 50 pairs and, and that was it. Just, uh, a one-time collab. So I'll, I'll bring in those SKUs and then they're, they're kind of gone forever. I think there's a like, so we're going to talk about your events, which was like a big thing that happened. I know I've kind of been hinting at it here, but um, before we get to that, I just, there's a, a really big lesson to be learned here is that you're building this brand authentically. It's about community. It's about a club. It's about genuine relationships. It's about being honest and just getting feedback from your community without even thinking about it. A lot of people think you just need to advertise and drive sales and offers, but so far you've just been really authentic with the brand. And I think if you can do that from day one, it gets a lot easier to leverage when you start expanding and advertising and doing all these other things because there's an authentic story buried in there. Yeah, and, and when, when you're expanding, growing, um, I keep your community and your brand, your, your culture in mind um, with, with things that you're not selling to. Um, what I've done recently, I, I started Run Club Radio um, just to add to the DNA, DNA of, of the, the brand, um, you know, I, I love music. Everyone loves music when they're running. Uh, so the idea with Run Club Radio is, is to invite uh, different DJs to bring on our mixes for your, for your runs. So that's just adding to, to the brand. And, and you only access that through music. Strava? Is that, is that a Strava thing? No, it's, it's a SoundCloud thing. So you pop on your SoundCloud, start your run on Strava, and then you have a playlist um, designed for running. So Whew, I need that. I'm honestly like, I have, the worst, <laughs> I have the most embarrassing playlist right now that I've had for like five years. They're all on my watch and yeah, I'll go check that out. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, let's, let's pivot there or go ahead. Ivana. Just to jump in before we pivot, because there's a question from Philippe, um, Philippe or Philippe. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but, um, please correct me. Uh, he's asking, and I think this is in reference to the, uh, like the Instagram kind of selling through Instagram and the DMS and that strategy, but he's asking if, uh, he, is there examples you can share? He doesn't really understand how you're selling like this. Um, so I guess one example was when we first released the merch, I, 
the first set of items that I got, I, I got them done and then photographed them. Um, I have a home studio with lighting and all that stuff. So I would post it on uh, my Instagram story, um, show each product on the Instagram story um, and say available now, DM me for inquiries. And that's, and then it, it's basically a message back and forth on uh, pricing, size guide, um, pickup date, all that stuff. Um, payment is done through uh, either PayPal or e-transfer back then. <laughs> it was, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was nuts, but, but it worked at that. I, I think an important piece, what you've been talking about is you kind of have to have the, like a, a, a big following like or not a big following, but just like people are kind of buying into this brand and the, the idea, not necessarily the products yet. Like you started as a run club and you're on Strava and you had built a little bit of a social presence, but then yeah. you're saying to them, Hey, awesome community we've built, go on my, my Instagram story and say, do you want to inquire about this merch? Pop into my DM, my direct message. I, th I think it started with, uh, I posted a story saying, should we do merch question mark? And then the response was yes. <laughs> so, so then merch came <laughs> but yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't about product first at all at all it was strictly a a community to bring runners together during uh, a pandemic um, and that was that's how it was started yeah so cool um let's yeah we just have a moment to reflect on how awesome that is i guess that's what we were doing there but <laughs> let's talk about these events now. Like you have this massive event coming up. It's called Dine and Dash. If, oh, if, God. if yes. Michael, <laughs> Michael mentioned it briefly earlier. Now Michael's been on all these news stations. He's on global TV and CBC. And he's kind of touring around with, it, with this, uh, th this event. So let's, let's hear a little bit about that. And how have you in integrated that into the brand as well? Um. Yeah, uh, Dine and Dash. It's been an absolute beast to work with and work on. Um, I, I mentioned before, uh, I've built these relationships with restaurant owners, club owners, uh, back when I was doing uh, event photography, um, product photography. Um, so so these, these, these restaurant owners I, I've become friends with. Um, with the second lockdown here in Alberta, um, there is no dining for, for restaurants. So they're obviously struggling. I decided that, you know, I'm going to try to help them the way that I knew how was throw on events. And with the, with the running club, um, I decided to do a virtual race in support of uh, local restaurants in Edmonton. Um, and that's kind of, that's kind of how it started. And how, and so, you, yeah, go ahead ask, how do you like in terms of the PR angle, how do you get on the, on the news stations and stuff like that? Like, are you reaching out yourself? Are you picking up the phone and calling them and saying, Hey, I have this new concept. Can I get some airtime or how are you doing that? Uh, yeah, I've sent out emails. Um, just telling the story, local news stations, they love a good story, especially during this time. Um, so if when they see, you know, I'm supporting six of the participating restaurants with this um, Dine and Dash virtual race, um, they they want to pick up that story right away. That's it's uh, for them. It's it's a nice change of change of pace um, for for news. Yeah. So it was it was emailing. Um, I didn't call them, but yeah, it was it was purely email um, and also references from friends who, who knew some of the, the stations that they were working as well. Yeah, I think local stories definitely have, uh, I don't want to say preference, but they do do well on the on the media side of things. But I also know sometimes, you know, when you're writing an email, just like a cold outreach email to some news station, it's, you know, I, like we, I've tried it a few times, and I, I don't think I got anywhere. So there, you know, if there's any tips or anything that you have on that end that's worked for you uh, I'm all ears <laughs> um I think I think it starts with um the story it, it, for them is it do you have a feel-good story um in this case uh, yeah like it's 
we want to help out restaurants and uh, it's a, they're, they're hurting right now. Um, that industry is relies heavily on, on dining um, guests. Right. So um, when they, when they see it, when they hear that uh, there's an initiative to help these restaurants, um, they, they want to get on board for sure. And so let's get some details with event. So we kind of said it's, it's a virtual yeah. event. It's a running event, dine and yes. dash. There's a dining component and there's a dashing component where you're, there's an eating component there's a running component, right? So what are the details? How, how yeah. does one participate in this event? So the di dine and dash, the name itself, I, I, there's a good friend of mine, uh, Joel. We, we go back and forth on, on random names for things. Um, so we came up with dine and dash. The idea is um, so Scott, you you ran into some some couple like events for running. You go on running room and um, register for an event. You get your race package, which usually is a is a bib and um, and a t shirt or something like that. Uh, you pay a registration fee. So with the dine and dash a virtual race, uh, your registration will include a dinner a takeout dinner for one or two at. Um, at one of the six restaurants that we've uh, partnered with, as well as a Dine and Dash um, t-shirt. So the, the registration package includes, um, yeah, your, your dinner, a t-shirt, and that's that's your, your race package. So look, so we're doing a bit different than, I guess, your typical um, marathon race package style. And so just so I'm understanding this correctly. So do, is the idea like, do you have to run to the restaurant and get the food and then like run home with the food? Or is it like you're just logging kilometers on the app and you pick up the meal separately? Yeah. So, so you pick up the meal separately. Um, there are three distances that you can run. Um, the event is tracked on Strava. So you can run a 10 K half marathon or a full marathon. Um, you get one week, to run that event uh, that you pick. Um, and then for food pickup, it's it's the following day. Um, so for example, it's race week is February 7th to 14th, and then pickup date for food is February 14th. Um, so the idea, you train hard, you run hard, you run your event hard, and then you reward yourself with a very lovely local meal. And there's no like take these back these if it's like minus 40 during that week? You know, I, I'm not going to make, uh, uh, say, Blair from Red Star check your Strava account to make sure that you're running that week. Um, it's it's all it's all it's fun. You know, it's have fun with it. You're you're the biggest thing is supporting uh, local restaurants. Right. So um, that's that's the core of it. That's your we go back to community building. That's you're you're helping the community grow. Um, and in return, you know, you're you're growing yourself as well. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the core value of, of this event. I'm definitely attending. I haven't got my ticket yet. I'm going to get my ticket right now. Anybody wants to get a ticket. What if, what if you're not in that? What if you're not in, I was just going to say, cause does that mean I have to move to Strava? Right? I guess I could, just, I could just probably start Strava for the event. Right. Uh, I mean, Scott, you, you don't necessarily have to have to be on Strava. Maybe you just screenshot it. So I know like for me personally that you're running, right. um, um, through your Nike running app, but, uh, you know, you don't have to be in Edmonton. You can, uh, I made a, a little thing on the Shopify on my Shopify website, um, for out of town registrations. So how that works is the, um, the money that would normally go to the restaurant, like your prepaid meal, um, would go to our Edmonton food bank and, um, you'd get the t-shirt as well. We'd ship that to you. Um, so it's, it's an event for, for really anyone. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, looking forward to that one. I love the, I love the, the donation aspect of it too. I think that's really nice. Yeah. And, and yeah, that just goes back to our, our core value and beliefs. Um, we just want to, we just want to grow and support the, the community. I think that's a, a massive takeaway too. Is <laughs> it, it goes, it goes, yeah. it goes back, like be, just being a, that a whole authentic angle, but you're building your community with all these initiatives. Like you built your community with your Instagram following. Now you're building your community with events and running and restaurants and partners. I think that's such a good way to spread the, the, 
the, the, the vision, the mission is through these partnerships and community. So what, what's it been yeah. like? like, are you keeping up with all the, like, I know uh, speaking with you, I know there's a lot of momentum when you, when you first launched, how, how, is, how are you keeping up with everything? Uh, you know what? It's been, it's been really solid. Um, it's, I, I was talking to you the, the day before I wanted to launch. I was like, Scott, I need to convert my online shop into a registration hub. <laughs> and, and it was, it was high stress. It was a very exciting first week with, uh, a lot of registrations. Um, it, it's been steady since then though. It's been steady since then. Um, which is great to see. Uh, it's the, my background, I guess, with all the other projects that I've done is, you know, I, I've always loved putting on events, um, whether it's like local shows in Edmonton. Now it's, it's an event surrounding the running community, uh, restaurants. It's, uh, it's just, it's just my passion. So I, I love doing it. I think you're doing a good, like meticulous job and it's been, it's been going in the right direction. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very worth it. Very, very proud of, of uh, the, the registration hub part, for sure. <laughs> it's uh, just, just changing the wording on, um, on, on everything to make it work as registration and not um, product buying <laughs> on the back end. It's, it's a lot of work, but yeah, it's, it's well worth it for sure. Yeah, you, you had some goals in mind for like how many people you would want to get in the, participating in this awesome event. Are you hitting some of those targets? Is it is it kind of blowing your mind or, or beating your expectations? Um, I've yet to hit my target. There's there's about a just over a week left for registration, so um, I think we're we're getting close to it. Uh, a little bit more um, Instagram posts. Facebook, maybe, maybe I'll do a Facebook ad. I don't know. Chow down about that. <laughs> um, maybe send out a couple of emails and, uh, and I'll be there. <laughs> uh, Michael, I have a bit more of a, like a long-term question, I guess this would be. Yeah. Um, so obviously anti-social running club was kind of born out of, you know, the pandemic and this whole like social distancing component. And um, like, what is your long-term plan with it? Like, do you envision it molding into something different to when this pandemic hopefully ends one day? Um, or do you intend to kind of keep it as is with the whole social distancing aspect of it and the antisocial side of it? And that is what it is. And that's what it's always going to be. Um, for me, I, you know, I, I try to look and plan for say five years ahead. Um, but I've always let this kind of this beast kind of grow one itself and, and um, see kind of where it takes me. Um, because for, for the most part, it's, it's not about, it's not about me and my vision, really. It's, um, it's everyone else that's part of it. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see where, where it goes um, organically. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to work with other brands, other like other studios in Edmonton, see what kind of events we could put on, um, continue working on apparel. Um, but at, at the end, I think it will, it, it's, it's about the club and, and um, less of like, less about me yeah, I and mean, where I see it. It might just mold into, you know, just the social running club instead of the anti-social. It, it can, <laughs> it totally can. Um, uh, there's this, there's this, quote that I keep thinking about um that I heard it was uh run alone if you want to if you want to run fast um run together if you want to run further mm -hmm. um and that I speaks to the club. again <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so yeah I think um we're getting close to to wrapping up but before we do I just wanted to like, I think the big lesson here has been like, you don't always need to start with just advertising. You could build a good brand. You could build a community. You can focus on images and, and involve your community in, in the products direction and the event direction and the name direction. Apparently we might drop the ante if, if the community believes that they need to do that. So what, like, how do you build community? What's your, what's your two or three or one, one to three little tips. 
for somebody who's like, I love this strategy. I want to go out there and build community. I'm not ready to go big with ads, or maybe I am doing ads, but I also want to build community. What's like a, a couple little tips that you would say, here's the, what you should go do to, to build a community. Um, first is to participate in, in events. Um, you, you meet a lot of people that way. Even, even being on this uh, podcast, even attending this podcast is, is kind of this, uh, the step in the right direction. You're, you're building, um, I guess, identity within different social circles, right? So, um, just putting yourself out there as, um, as uh, someone who who wants to belong, right? Um, so yeah, just being just attending events. That's uh, that's that's number one for sure. Uh, it's obviously hard for for in person events during COVID, but um, there's definitely ways around that. You have a Facebook group yet? Do I have a Facebook group? Yeah, I don't know. No. Could be a good Should idea. Should I? <laughs> could, be, could be a good idea. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, like, with, even with the Merchant Mastery community and with the Merchant Mastery Facebook group, the way we approached building that too was through like participating in different like workshops and webinars and you know events with our partners and and, and that sort of thing. That's how we really started building and growing this community. And you know, we we kind of tried obviously like full disclosure initially. We were like, yeah, let's run some ads to it. And then it was just you're not. We weren't really getting the the merchants that you know really would be able to take advantage of the group and learn from it. So then we thought, okay, you know what? We're going to try the community route. And that's what's really worked for us. And we're really, we're really happy with the community that we've built that way. So. No, I feel it. It's uh, I, I love, I love what you guys are doing. It's it. Yeah. You, you definitely feel like you're, you're in a nice, nice little team environment. I love it. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much. Uh, everybody. Thank you for tuning in today. That has been a really good lesson on community and brand which is, you know, even Shopify will preach this a lot too. They're saying like a really good business has a really good story, an authentic brand, an authentic story. So I think that we all had a really good lesson that we learned today is like, don't forget about this authenticity and story and brand and partnerships and events and all this other great stuff that you could be doing to elevate your store. Michael, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. Everybody enjoy the last one or two days here of January and we'll see you again really soon. Thank you so much.